Hello everyone, I'm Leslie. Welcome to Back to Basics. Today, as you can see, we are in the 21st century, but we are here to answer the 21st century question of, was there pecan pie in the 18th century? Let's just let history speak for itself. So let's start answering questions, addressing questions. So pecans are actually a type of hickory nut. They are related directly to the hickory tree. They're um, of the same genus. So pecans are one of the only nuts that are native to North America. Um, along with pecans, you have, of course, hickory nuts, <laughs> since they're of the same genus. Black walnuts, not English walnuts, but black walnuts. Um, hazelnuts and then you also have chestnuts don't forget about American chestnut there are still American chestnut trees they are subject to the blight the new shoots come off of the roots but it's not like any are going to mature into adulthood but then you also have beech nuts and butternuts and some places say they're not in with that but beech nuts and butternuts and don't forget about the oak trees that produce acorns acorns are actually a nut and acorns were used a lot by the Native Americans, um, indigenous people. Okay, so are there recipes in any 18th century cookbooks for pecans? I have to say that out of all the recipe books I've looked at, I have yet to find a pecan recipe from the early, the time that we actually portray in our reenactment, in our living history, if you want to call it that. I have yet to find a recipe from the early 1700s to the late 1750s, mid 1750s. I have not. However, most cookbooks are written on the other side of the pond. And pecan trees didn't grow in England. They didn't have pecans. However, they did have almonds. Almonds do not grow well in a lot of the portions of the United States. They don't grow well in Illinois because they bloom early, very early, and then our frost comes in, our late frost comes in, and it kills the blooms, and then there are no almonds. So we don't have almond trees in Illinois. However, they do grow them commercially in California. Totally different climate than Illinois. <laughs> that might explain that. So there are many, many, many recipes in 18th century cookbooks for almonds, almonds, almond custard pie. Um, there is a recipe called um, an almond praline and it's not a praline like we know it today. It's actually a cake that has almonds in it. You can find many recipes with almonds in them in 18th century cookbooks. So, what happens if I'm French, which is what we portray, French, in the Illinois Territory, in the bottom, bottom ground, um, by Poirier du Rocher, Prairie de Rocher, along the Mississippi River, adjacent to Fort Deschart, what do I do if I'm really hungry and craving an almond custard pie. I have no almonds. I can't go to the store and buy almonds. I can't even go on Amazon and order almonds. I have no almonds. But I really want a pie and I'm hungry for a nut pie. Well, it's been known that the French in the early 17th century down Louisiana way actually preferred the taste of the pecan in the praline cake as opposed to the almond, which is what it always was in France. I believe we're an industrious type people. We make ends meet. What do you do when you're cooking and you live in the country like I do and you don't have what you need? You substitute something else. There are no almonds here. I'm going to take these pecans that are easy to crack, they're super rich, 
they're buttery. They're easier than almonds. I don't have to blanch them and slip them all out of their little peelings. We wouldn't even have had almonds here. Nobody makes almond anything in Illinois in the, seven, in the 18th century, in the 1750s. Maybe later they imported them over here. Slow boat from China <laughs> or Europe. So I'm going to make me and my family a pecan custard pie. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to take an almond custard pie and in place of the almonds, we're going to use pecans. And I'll tell you what, it's not the pecan pie that you have come to know and possibly love or possibly hate. It's a love-hate thing. But I'll tell you what, it's an amazing pie. Stick around, see how it turns out. Okay, so we're going to get ready to mix up this, well, the recipe actually says to make almond custard. It's going to be pecan custard. We already know that. <laughs> so I'm going to read you the recipe really quick and explain just a couple of things. And I'm not going to read all of it because it calls for rose water and orange flower water. And we all know that that's not to our taste now. Actually, I think it just calls for orange flower water, but... I did read, just to let everybody know, I did read that rose water, it actually came from an English website and they were doing a, a historical recipe and rose water, rose flower water now is actually way stronger than it was back in the 18th century. So they recommend cutting it half and half with distilled water. So it might be the reason why we don't find it palatable because now it's twice as strong as it used to be. But at any rate, we are not going to put in the orange flower water. But the recipe says to make almond custards. So we're going to make that pecan custards. Boil a mutchkin of cream, which is a mutchkin is equivalents to a little less than a pint. A mutchkin was a term that was used from 1661 until the late 1800s. We don't use that measurement anymore, whether it was ever used in the States, I don't know. It actually is um, a Scottish term, which I find a little strange because it's in this cookbook by Elizabeth Cleland. It comes from the new and easy method of cookery by Elizabeth Cleland, C-L-E-L-A-N-D. I would say Cleland, not Cle Cleland, because there's no E after it. So it calls for to take a muchkin of cream, which is a little less than a pint, which is two cups. We know that in modern day. So this cookbook was actually written in 1755. So we are in that time period, just to let you know, in case anybody's wondering, because this recipe calls for us to actually temper the eggs, which usually in recipes from that early, they don't call for tempering the eggs, but it says, Boil, let me read you the recipe and then we'll go about this. Boil a mutchkin of cream, and this says with cinnamon and orange or lemon peel in it, but that will not impart good flavor with pecans, so we're not using that. Beat the yolks of seven eggs, which we have in here. Three of them broke. Just yolks, seven egg yolks. Beat the yolks of seven eggs and mix them with a little of the cream before you boil it. So we're boiling this cream. Okay, and then we're going to temper these egg yolks after we beat these up. We're going to temper these egg yolks. And then it says, um, then mix all together with a quarter of a pound of almonds bleached and pounded. We're actually using chopped pecans. And then it, here it says, and a little orange flower water. Sweeten them to your taste. So we're going to add, we're using <coughs> brown sugar because white sugar was a little more expensive then and brown sugar was more common so we're using brown sugar and this is a cup of brown sugar which our taste now is definitely sweeter than it was then so to make it more like a modern pecan pie we're going to use the cup instead of less i would say if you were in that time period you probably would only put a half a cup in there but if you're looking for a period correct recipe to use that's going to taste more like pecan pie does now you would want a cup so we're putting a cup in there 
And then it says sweeten them to your taste, put them on the fire again, and keep it stirring one way until it is almost boiling. Then take it up and put it in cups. Now, that would that's if you're going to make the custard actually in custard cups. We're going to go the route of actually putting the custard in a pie. There are other recipes from the same time period that tell you you can put it in a pie, in a, in a paste, like a puff paste shell, or you can put it in cups. And we actually have a pan prepared, two pans prepared. We have tart pans. So we have two pans prepared for with puff paste for this filling when it's done. If you're using a pie plate, this will fill one pie plate, but the tart tins are smaller, so we're gonna do two. So we're just gonna give these a little bit. Beat it up just a little bit. And we're gonna leave this fork in here because after we add some of that cream that's warm, we're gonna have to mix it up again. If you remember, the recipe said to boil a munchkin of cream. So we actually have to bring this to a boil. And then we're gonna temper the egg. A little more pecan history, if you're mildly interested. They were so popular, they were actually could be used almost as a currency to be traded for other goods. George Washington was known to carry a pocket full of pecans in his breeches to snack on during yes, the day. Yes, in his pockets, yes. And George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, I think Thomas Jefferson planted his in 1799. George Washington was before that. What was it, 93 or 95 or I'm not sure. Somewhere in there after the, um, after the revolution. But they, they both got into planting pecans and, 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 and it became um, a, a, an industry. They would take the best native specimens and, and they would graft them to try, just like we do now, to try to get the best. We're gonna temper the eggs. This is all it takes, is to add it slowly and whisk it because this hot cream in this cup, if I add it too quickly, it will cook these eggs. But we've gotta get enough in there. Oh, sorry, I dripped on your stove, bud. It'll clean up. So you're, you're gonna, bringing the temperature up gradually. Yes, I'm gonna Here, do let this. Me, I, let me get around this. No, side. let me do this. Let me do this and I'll be out of their way. There, this, I'm, this, I'm trying this, to stay, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. much better. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. Can you see that now better? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kind of was. And you can work a little better. Well, it doesn't make me any difference, but I'm on this side of the pot, so. So, so you, what we're doing, I guess, uh, we're bringing up the temperature of those bringing gradually. Bringing up the temperature of the eggs and reducing the amount of egg per to cream. cream. ratio, yes. so they don't scramble. Yes. And we have a fairly large pot here, but we don't want to not have enough pot. So we could do this in a smaller pot, but the bigger surface area lets us do this a little faster. You can see the cream is already thickening. Cream gets thick as you heat it, as you cook it. Some people would probably already take this and dump that in there, but you know what? I'm a little paranoid and I'm like, you know what? I can't put too much hot cream into my egg yolks. But you can put too many eggs can, into the hot cream. But I can certainly not put enough in it. So, there's that. And set that over here on that cup. And then we're going to dump this back in here a whole while. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that yet, honestly. Yeah, I am. I have to. I'm, I'm thinking out loud, but I have to now, really, because my eggs are hot, and I have to add them into the hot mixture while they're hot. I was gonna add the sugar and melt it first, but it all has to cook anyway. Yeah, and if you cool them off, so too, too if cool, I get them cold, back, you'll have to them. Yeah, if I get them cold, then I have to start over. So here we have our cup of brown sugar. And this is all that's in here, you guys. This is this is super easy. It's a it's a it's two cups of cream, a pint of cream, seven or eight egg yolks, depending on how large they are. 
um, maybe nine if you're using small eggs, a cup of brown sugar. And I don't have a flame underneath here yet, but I want to get this dissolved in here and the eggs well mixed before I actually turn that back on. And then we're just going to stir this until it, I think it says until it nearly comes to a boil. Now what the recipe didn't call for, it did call for orange flower water for the almonds. And I know vanilla was not common in the 18th century, but so if I was making this for an event, I would not put vanilla in it. However, if you're looking, if you are one of our people that are looking to just make a pecan pie that is better than the recipes with the caro syrup of today, you can throw some vanilla in there. If I were making it for an event, I would not because we would not have had vanilla back then. Yeah, what about a teaspoon so, would probably do? No more than a teaspoon. Because it's not like you have a lot of liquid here. So I'm going to get rid of this whisk. And I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so for our history lesson today, I'm gonna to read, it says, by the early 1700s, the French were also discovering the merits of the American pecan. Expedition members accompanying, please excuse my French pronunciation, <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne de Bienville wrote that all of the nuts, the best among them was the pecan. Even earlier, however, French Jesuit missionary Pierre Francois Xavier de Charlevoix documented La Salle's expeditions in the New World and noted that pecans were more delicate, possessing a flavor so fine that the French make pralines, which is the cake comprised of almonds, of them as good as those made of almonds. So, then we move on to colonial America. Once colonists discovered and shared pecans, the nuts drew interest. Um, the first real introduction of pecans outside their natural range came in 1799. So it took a while since we were already eating pecans in the early 1700s for them to actually try to take these pecans out of the waterways and along, along the rivers and the wetlands of the Midwest for them to take them and put them, cultivate them elsewhere, plant them and grow groves of pecan trees. It wasn't until 1799 when New Orleans resident Daniel Clark Jr. sent a box of pecans to the then Vice President Thomas Jefferson via Philadelphia. In his letter, Clark explained, it might be worthwhile to cultivate it in Virginia for use and ornament. Jefferson did indeed plant a grove of pecans and documented his pecan or Illinois nut. Okay, so we're dumping our pecans in here because we realized these were supposed to be in here while we were heating them, which is good. We're not up to a boil yet. It calls for a quarter of a pound, almost a quarter of a pound of almonds. And a quarter of a pound of almonds is equal to just shy of a cup of pecans. Now, by all means, if you have extra pecans, you could certainly add them in it. It can't make it bad. So we're just bring, so we're bringing all of this up to temperature. We want the nuts and everything else to be up to temperature. Okay, so we are going to ladle half of this in this pie shell. And we're not going to make you watch us do both of them, but we're going to ladle half of it in here. It's probably going to get pretty hot on my fingers pretty quick. So like I said, we use puff paste, but you could certainly use... Um, just a regular pie crust if you wanted. And that's about all I'm going to put in there because this is going to get bigger because it has eggs in it. There's our oven. See, we're right. We're up to temperature. Now, like I said, you can't have too many pecans. So I have some extra pecans and we're going to put these extra pecans on the top of each one. They should get a really nice and these are going to get a really nice toast. toasted yes, flavor yes i have to confess i'm not supposed to gino gonna kill me but the reason why we're not showing you the other one is 
we're actually going to throw a little flaked coconut yeah. in the other one. We, the, this smells so much like German chocolate cake icing that we decided to throw a little shredded coconut in the other one just to see what it's like. It's what it smells like, so that's what we're going to do, you guys. This is the 18th century pie, and the other one will be the 21st century pie. Oh, yes. Here we go. <laughs> that is just so much better than syrupy pecan pie. And I love modern pecan pie. It's custard and pecans all the way through. No massive layer of syrup. It's still sweet, not as sweet as a, as a syrup pie. Wonderful toasted pecan flavor. Absolutely incredible. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. And now, because I know you're all just as curious as I am, we got to try the one with the coconut in it. I have a feeling this is going to be unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. At an event for historically correct pie, this stands on its own merits. It's wonderful. As a modern culinary masterpiece, this 18th century custard recipe with pecan instead of almond with the shredded coconut unbelievable incredible and all we did was add one cup of sweetened flake coconut like mm -hmm. baker's coconut that's all we did into the pie filling yes before we dumped it in the shell but the puff paste the coconut the pecans this is wonderful you guys should really try this thanks for watching god bless y'all we'll talk to you again soon